What's going on, everybody? Happy early 4th of July. This is Wonder Soul episode 7, luck number 7. I'm your host, a bearded Buddha. And tonight we're recording, talking about some NBA basketball. We're talking about one of the greatest of our generation. You know, we'll argue that later. Um, so we're obviously going to be talking about LeBron James. We're going to be talking about him, the new Laker. Okay. But I can't do that on my own. All right. I love having conversations with others, with my friends. We usually spend this time when stuff like this happens in the sports world and we call each other up and we send texts and we're just like excited and we just like to just nerd and geek out about all these different sports related topics and you know we're mostly football fans but we love all sports and basketball is exciting and fun to watch and uh yeah so i'm gonna bring in two of my friends to help me move this conversation forward i want y'all to hear their perspectives they're fun funny cool dudes been really close with them most of my life um, and it means the world to me that they're going to jump on. And you guys are going to definitely hear from these guys in the future, in future episodes. So let me go ahead and get the first guy. So they're, they're both going to be on the phone. If we have any issues with service or phones dying or going out, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can. We'll, we'll handle that when that happens. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and get this started. All right. So let's hit the call button. Boom, 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 Hello? 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 Is this Grant? This is. Ah, hey, man, what's up? Okay. All right, so I got Grant. Let me go ahead and get one more person. One second, Grant. Let me go ahead and do this. Hit that. All right. So we got Grant. Um, and let's get this other dude on the line. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is he gonna pick up? Oh snap! Yo, Jerry. Yo. Can you hear me? Can you, all right. Can you hear me better this way? Uh, the other way. The first way. Yeah. Can the, you hear me better? Yeah, that way. This way? Okay. That way. <laughs> yeah, that way, that way. All right, I'm about to merge the call, okay? So give me one All second. Right. All right. All right, it's merging. Okay, okay, okay. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear each other? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. What up? Hey, Jerry, what's up, man? Oh. Uh, wow, dude. <laughs> what? What's going on, everybody? Yeah, dude. All right, all right. So I've already done the introduction, guys. I've already told everybody what we're going to be talking about tonight and on this episode. So um, I don't know if you guys want to introduce your guys' selves or anything like that, something real quick, and then we'll just get the conversation going. So uh, I don't know. Grant, do you want to start first? You just want to tell anybody? Yeah, no, I t- I'll make this quick. I'm Grant. I'm from Georgia. Uh, longtime friend of Luke's, and uh, we like the same shit. And That's there right. You go. True. And All you're right. Hear us talk about it. So, <laughs> here we go. All right. What about you, Jared? Yo, this is Jared. Feeling like a villain. Living the dream. Uh, friend of Luke. Friend of Grant. Just, you know. Yeah. Doing what I do. There you go. There you go. And we're and we're all we're all sports fans. Uh, I know Jared. I know Jared's a big uh, Florida. Florida State fan, huh? Right? You follow you follow the the Seminoles and all that, huh? You said Grant? No, I said you, man. I said oh, you. Dude. I said. I'm wearing the old logo right now, dude. Really? Lost my son. I had some boys say sunglasses. I lost on a jet ski earlier, dude. It pissed me off, but oh. Hey. Hey, what what can you do? I'm oh, sorry. I'm you lose some, you know what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. And Grant, man, I know you're a big uh, uh, Alabama Crimson Tide fan. I am. Yeah. Uh, I'm slightly passionate about the Crimson Tide. Uh, I've been a long time. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, dang. Right now. 
Yeah, man, good times. I, 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 Oh no! I was just saying that like, both of us, all three of us, we really are focused on football most of the time. Like that's our main sport, I would yeah. say, right? But I mean, we still indulge and keep up with all the other sports, including basketball. So, what is it? Is it Tagger? Is, is that who you got coming in? We're with Tagger. Who's already there? I was about to say, like, remember when we played y'all in Jacksonville in 2007? Yeah, and you beat us. Yeah, I was at that game, and I looked at some highlights the other day. Dude, it seems like it was filmed in, like, the 80s. It looks so green and old. I'm like, man, I'm the one that's old. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, dude, I was, I was out on a date during that game. I was at a FIFA Brady's watching Alabama just screw up, and I was having to, like, keep my composure. I, I remember it was on Double Day, and it was important that it went well. And I just inside, like – I was popping blood vessels, man. It was terrible. I was so pissed. And they, like, it was just interceptions late in the game, I think. Deep yeah. let up. And, like, I, I can't remember the specifics of it. But, yeah, dude, I actually have a fond memory of that game. Um, and how crappy it actually was. <laughs> so, um... So, uh, you guys both know what's happened recently, you know, uh, with the whole free agency and the NBA, you know. The big... The, the big the big splash that just happened. I think it was what two days ago now. Because Grant, you you told me you called me. We were just on the phone and then we hung up and oh, you. Yeah, and then I I opened Bleacher Report. And it was the first thing that that popped up. Uh, sorry, I'm getting my so new phone. Um, <laughs> my bad, guys. Uh, but no, yeah, it's I, I don't know. Like, okay, just let's go around the table. Like, first thoughts uh, okay. right off the bat, like. Why are you surprised he didn't stay in Cleveland, or are you not surprised at all? Uh, ooh, like, okay, okay, yeah, good point. Uh, um, well, Jared, I mean, how do you feel? Were you surprised? What, did you find out like uh, through Bleacher Report, like the moment it happened, or how did you find out? I woke up, dude. I had like a bleep on my phone. <laughs> looked at it. LeBron to the Lakers. You no, know, something like no joke. This is not a you know troll text or something. But they were, it was like. It was shocking. LeBron to the Lakers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, definitely, man. And I was like, oh, man. And then I wrote a song about Cleveland. You want to hear it? Yeah, man. Absolutely. And the when the Browns go home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Oh, God. It's, it's uh, There's so much to hit on this that I, me and Luke hit on it earlier, like like, just for everyone knows that's the reason about this phone call right now is because of a conversation earlier that we just ranted about. First of all, like, my, I, the first argument, like, you can't tell me that he just made it easier out of himself by playing in the West. Mm. Yeah. Like, if he was stayed at Cle- like, in Cleveland, he could at least negotiate it for, like, a better roster or a, a new shooter. But, like, what, what, you put yourself... Playing like everybody from the Warriors to the Rockets, Trailblazers, to the OKC yeah. to the Spurs, you're playing them all season. And oh man, I'm just that's like the first thing I'm trying to figure out. Now, now, hold up. Now, does anybody have any loyalty to any NBA teams? Like, that's kind of why I brought up no, the whole not like, at all. like, yeah, I came here. I mean, I like Florida State players and I like good teams. I like LeBron, you know, it's like. I want to watch greatness. True. And it's shocking. Yeah, it is, man. I mean, because I know when Grant called me uh, and told me about it, I was like, no way, man. The freaking Lakers, man. The Lakers. Yeah. I mean, just because, like, Grant had, when we talked about this earlier today, man, but, you know, just mentioning the Lakers, you think of all the other great Lakers, right? Like Kobe and Shaquille O'Neal and, and Magic. And now you got someone like LeBron. Yeah, yeah. All these other legends. And now you're going to just go from, you know, the Cleveland to over there. Yeah. I I, number one, I agree 100%. And, like, hats off to all those players. They they were all phenomenal players. And there's nothing wrong with the Lakers. Right. But to me, personally, if you're going to be the greatest of all time, like, why not set a trend? Or I'm not saying he even had to stay in Cleveland. 
But like, why not just carve out your own path mm. and put yourself like exactly. on just a unique road? You, I mean, you've been dominating your whole career, and I'd like you can ask close friends. I'm not a huge LeBron fan personally, but like he's phenomenal. Yeah, like you got you got to respect the game. There's you a know. lot of things to respect about him, even more than his game. But it's like it, it, I just kind of felt like that was where he kind of not sold out. But, mm. but, but with, like everyone predicted that, like even if he didn't stay in Cleveland, I felt like anywhere else, especially in the East, um, he would have been fine at, and probably would have had a, like more of a helping hand. But mm. well, let me that in a minute as far as who LA brought on. Well, let, let me ask you, Jared, because you're a Florida native. Uh, you know, when he went to Miami, how'd you feel? Okay, dude. This is you know, this is where the deep cut happens. I was interning in Miami both summers they won the championship. Oh, wow. So I was, I was deep in it. Like This is like 2012, I was, 2013. I was about this earlier. What'd you say? Uh, it wasn't that, that he, he won the championships with Miami in 2012 and 2013, right? Yeah. Okay, so, cool. Okay, I'll, uh, let me just set the stage. 2012, crazy. I was at camp when they ended, they put the nail in the coffin. I didn't see it. Second year, I was at camp as well. I had a room full of the guys in my cabin, streaming it on my phone. Bosh blocks Danny Green shot versus Spurs. Like, one of the craziest moments of my life, you know, because you're just like, you have a ton of Miami fans. Everybody's just ride or die for the heat. And I'm like, I, I just love LeBron, you know. I want to see him do, you know, go back to back and that happened Ray Allen hit, goes down hits a three that was, it's like that's one of the things about sport you know we go in deeper on this but you think about being a fan it brings people together and it creates like emotional memories oh for and, sure and like that's the thing I thought about LeBron even when he went back to Cleveland I'm like dang like I can imagine going back to your hometown and you know it's not that he he didn't betray anybody there he it, he said it himself. He brought them a championship. Just yeah, slide that in there. He, he, his four years in Miami was like going to college. And then he goes back home. Mm. So that's what's shocking is like, I thought he would stay in Cleveland. Now, now like, do you think that's going to tarnish things? I mean, we don't, we don't really know how things are going to play out in, in LA, but like, yeah. I think we all have this, um, we can all agree that we have this respect for players that, you know, play out their careers at, with one team, or if anything, they come back and they finish out with that team that either drafted them or, like, for LeBron, it's his hometown, right? So, him going to LA, does that kind of, you know, mess up your guys' way of thinking about, you know, his, his, uh, I guess his legend or, you know, how you'll remember him after he's finished? I mean, like, like I said earlier, it's not, I don't feel like he sold out, but it's just, He's been in the finals eight years in a row, you know, and yeah. and so he's he's proven he can do it no matter where he is. And I just it blows my mind like he had the pick of the crop, like he could have gone anywhere and 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 made it easier for himself and had a stronger like. And I keep I'm not trying to guess like Lakers pick up Rajon Rondo, they still have Alonzo mm-hmm. Ball. Um, who else they pick up? Uh, Lance Stevenson, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and then that other guy, uh, Cole. Coleman Pope or whatever it is. I wrote it down, but my handwriting's shit, so there you go. Um, uh, but anyway, so, like, he's going to have a supporting cast, but, it, like, like Twitter was all over it. Like, number one, he didn't have, like, they didn't draft him, or they didn't pick up a big shooter. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, it's hard to figure people out. I'm trying to figure out, like, his rhyme and reason, you know, like, he is a, such a dominant legacy already. He doesn't have to bow to anybody or go to LA or follow anybody's paths. Like he's a trendsetter, and I, I don't understand why he's. I kind of feel like he's still seeking to follow somebody when he clearly has nobody left to follow. I mean, if he keeps winning titles, yeah. yeah. You, you got to been to the finals eight years in a row. Like that's that's nuts. Oh, that's but, that's insane. Every team on his back. Like that's what's crazy. Is Cleveland would not have been in the finals. It's not like they had a team that would have competed, you know. Even in the Eastern Conference Finals, like, if he'd have been in Miami, it's not going to be against Cleveland. Okay. Any year, you know. Can 
can, I, can I open this thing wide open? Yeah, man. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, and, and me and Luke hit on this earlier, Jared. I, I just... I, I want to hear everyone's opinion on this because I don't even know if I have a solid opinion. I just It's like more of just a food for thought. <clears throat> LeBron James has been to the finals eight years in a row but has only come out with three titles. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not underselling him at all. Like, he is a phenomenal... He had been to the finals eight years in a row. I don't have to keep saying that to keep putting emphasis. That is a phenomenal feat. Yeah. Uh, but it, at the same time, if you're... If you're three for eight, you know you gotta you gotta put the, that you gotta put those experiences together. Like, what's going on? Yeah, a few of those series were a fifty-fifty against a phenomenal Spurs team that was like game seven. Like sometimes he just got beat out, but then, like this year he got swept. Like trying yeah. to carry the team on his back, like you know, like and, and he has other losses too. But you ask yourself if you're three of eight in the finals. Like, the, when you lost, what's going wrong? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, it's, it's your supporting cast, and I think that's the most important thing. Now, second question on top of that is, do you think that L.A. gave that to him? Does LeBron have the supporting cast he needs? Mm. Well, 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 what do you think, Jerry? That was, that was a little bit of a run-on statement. <laughs> I I ran it's all good. slightly there. It's all good. What do you think, Jerry? You know how I saw a meme. I'm talking to, he's like, you think all three Ball brothers are going to be on the Lakers? Like, <laughs> no, dude. No. No. Baller brand. That is, I'm glad, okay, I think LeBron saves the image of the Lakers because LeVar Ball was trolling, like, and kind of down, like, messing it up. If he's like, all three of my sons are going to be on the Lakers in, you know, five years. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Wait, no, that's not happening. No, no, dude. I think that's actually going to be one of the biggest problems with him going to LA is that whole distraction of the ball yeah. brand and the that you know that father and stuff. And you know, I don't think that's going to do any good for any hopes of LeBron wanting to do anything, finishing strong in his career in LA. I mean, I just don't. Oh, shit. You know, what's yeah. up? What's up, Grant? I feel like you got a moment. No, you good, okay, man. LeBron James is three and five in the finals. I kept saying three of eight. I apologize. Three and five is eight overall. I, I was really oh okay that okay so cool cool. He was three and five record. In the finals. So that's not bad. That's not bad. No. So I mean, so I guess like the biggest question is now is you know what? Okay, let me ask you guys this. Okay, before I get on to that biggest question, but. What other teams did you see him going? Because we both, we all, not both, but all three of us said that we were surprised that he was going to L.A. Now, not only does he go to L.A., he doesn't do it like he did with Miami, right? There was that, the whole decision. There was that whole spectacle about that. So it just happened overnight, not three, basically. Not four, not five, yeah. Yeah, just. <laughs> my, yeah, but then again, like. Simon Bosch was a bigger deal, and there's Wade, and there's LeBron James. Right, like, but you know he's so LeBron he more, James. He was more of a big three ideology than like LeBron James is he. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But so here's the yeah. thing, right? So he's he when he went to Miami, he assembled like a crew, right? So that made more sense. So we're saying that LeBron now is going to L.A., a team full of younger players, and he doesn't have that assembled Avengers crew. You know, and he's already carrying all the weight, and he's getting older. So, is he making like two steps backwards doing this? I mean, where else could he have gone to fit and and had a better chance to win a championship other than staying at Cleveland? I, I you know, I think I want to. You know, I feel like if he goes anywhere that has a decent shooting, he's fine. You just need somebody to bounce out his game. What's well, what's that team? Yeah, I mean, you need what, what, on the inside too. What what team? I mean, I guess the Lakers could be that guy, except they didn't have a lot of big men. They just, I mean, other than uh-huh. well, they just signed wait like, one, two, two big guys. We'll see how that works out. But like, they they need a really solid three point shooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. Like JJ Redick, the like, was the Seventy Sixers just resigned him. Should have gone after him. JJ Redick on the outside of it, for God's sakes, like. I said, you know, but th- yeah. that's what they're doing with Rajon Rondo. They got that veteran shooter. So, um, it's 
just like the veteran yeah just, just experience to have period but that's you know, what he that young rate, but so. didn't he didn't he have nothing but veterans in cleveland this past year a bunch of older broken players you had d rose you had kevin you had all these like you know misfit toys <laughs> just hey guys remember when la went after dwight howard and that was a complete yeah i mean uh, that's what i'm saying like he yeah, well, he's not He's not setting himself up for anything better just from face value alone, unless, you know, they add more players. But even then, that brings us back to the whole fact of why go to a team in the West? And now we have the whole thing with the Warriors and what, you know, they just signed who, Grant? Who'd they sign today? Yeah. Or the I other? Signed, uh, oh, uh, Boogie. Yeah. Uh, Boogie Davis. Uh, uh, oh, DeMarcus so Cousins. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. DeMar- oh, sorry. Marcus Cousins. Um, Jared, now hear me out. So, when you play in the East, you know Golden State or the Rockets are going to end up there, right? Mm -hmm. Probably like 70% of the time, the Golden State, you're going to meet them in the finals. You know that. You can, but at the same time, you can go through the East and know you can make it to the finals as well and at least get a shot at the trophy. Yeah. But now you're having to go through them in the playoffs before you even reach the finals. So, like, exactly. by the way, look, you know, if you're thinking about it this way, he just made it twice as hard for himself to earn titles now. Like, if he would have just stayed in that division, or like, I, if I'm not mistaken, all of his finals have come from the East Division, right? Since he's played yeah. the on the East. Yeah. So he just went to that. Like, I don't think, I don't know if he thought of that. Maybe he did think of that. Maybe he's just going to be that badass. But I... And who else? Like, that's the a tall order. Like, they're stacking... I mean, getting DeMarcus Cousins on the Warriors, they're stacking... Oh, uh, dude. Against, <laughs> knowing I'm, that's going to happen. Because he's got to beat the Spurs, the Rockets, and the Warriors. Dude, I'm so sorry. To me, it was just this perfect response. Like, oh, LA just picked up LeBron James. And what do they do? They give him yeah. a one-year contract, and he's a really good, strong center who's not afraid to go up against LeBron James. I'm like, dude, hats off to this. Hats off to the Warriors for number one having the cap space, hmm. but number yeah. two, seeing a one-year risk because they know he's he's a really energetic player. And Golden State does have a specific rhythm to that locker room. I think everybody can tell. Um, yeah. KD matched with it very well. And they, that's why they share the ball. That's why they win championships, because they work well together. Um, but that, that they're, like, going back to my point, they only gave him a one-year uh, contract for DeMarcus Cousins. It's, I think it's a genius move. And I think it's still, like, LeBron James, his life never gets easier. Because you know if you're LeBron James and you saw that on your phone. You're like, oh, great. Right. Like, shit. Yeah, he's here too. You know, like he couldn't have been excited about that. Yo, yo. So, Jared, do you do you feel like the West is too loaded now? That there's too many super <laughs> squads over there. Well, I mean, that's kind of the thing. Is like you even have like Milwaukee, mm. and you have other teams that are. It's like the young players, quote unquote. They're not that young anymore. Yeah. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? Giannis, he's not young. He's a ve- he's like about to be a veteran. There's other teams that I, I it's like it doesn't make sense because it's not like I'm a Lakers fan and I was shocked by it. You know what I mean? But it is kind of stacked where the West is already on paper better than the East. Hands down. And now it's kind of like, well, it's like one side versus the, everybody else. Well, okay. Who goes to the playoffs? The Celtics, I mean, the Celtics are good. The Celtics, like, I know, Luke, you're a Celtics fan. Yeah, yeah. Celtics are solid. Yeah. They're like the Warriors like, of the I, East, man. You should speak on that because it's like they're on the up and up. Like, they're coming hard and fast. And, but... Well, like, is it just going to be like oh, the Celtics make the playoffs and then Celtics to be- are going to be there for sure? Them are the Raptors and yeah. the 76ers. The Ra- oh, yeah, the Raptors too, definitely. That was the top three to finish in the East this season. 
were the Raptors or Celtics Raptors in seventy six years. So, I, so I mean, that, but that, those are stiff teams too, man. Like you know, like I, I feel like we, I know we've kind of been crabbing on the East for the last thirty minutes, <laughs> but, like, but there, there's still a lot of talent over there with the Pacers and everything, um, and they've made some moves here in free agency. I, I I can't quote all those right now because. I'm not a pro at this, and uh, so like, but take my word for it. Like, they're not they're not sitting there on their asses. Like, they're getting things done as well. Um, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But like, uh, just my main point though is, I I feel like LeBron made life harder for himself by this move. Regardless yeah, of the exactly. control he gets, regardless of the relationship with Magic, like, regardless of whatever perks we can sit here and and, and bring up, like, I feel like. Regardless of all of it, he made life harder for himself. I don't know if he was going in expecting to get to get a uh, uh, Leonard from the Spurs. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he had different expectations. I don't know what he thought, but no. I, I I'm just I'm convinced right now that it's it just got harder for him. Let me let me let me throw this to y'all, okay? Because we we uh, you, we can't help but to bring back the whole him leaving Cleveland and going to Miami. Basically, so he could win championships. This doesn't feel like I'm moving somewhere to win championships. It feels like I'm tired. Uh, if it happens, cool, you know. But I'm just going to LA because that would be a bomb ass play. Huh? How long was he with Cleveland that first time? He was in. So he got drafted by Cleveland in 2003. He was there until 2010, and then that's when he he dipped out, and went to Miami, and he was there. So he had seven seasons. With with Cleveland before he went to Miami, right, right. It's man, it's justified. But but and but in the big picture at this point in his career now, bro. Like seven seasons is a long time to put with the team. It's respectful. Yeah. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, is that him just saying, you know, I'm gonna go finish this career out in California where it's nice and beautiful, and I'll just. Well, I think you he know. is too established in his career. He has the freedom to do what he wants. And he got I paid. Lot, I think a lot of people realize that. And. And like I'm not a, like I'm for it's so funny to hear me talk so highly about this guy because normally I'm just not that big of a fan. But it's it, the proof's in the pudding. Like it's there. <laughs> like it, it is what it is. He's just that good. He and he brought Cleveland the championship. He gave him a parade in the streets. He did what he was supposed yeah. to do. So like Cleveland can't say crap about it, and they're not bringing the talent in. It's it's not there. It's not there. Well, uh, they, but LA still is not a Yeah. But now they're not burning his jersey in the street now. They're like, oh, thank you. You know, they yeah. know better. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because yeah. they've done that before, and then he came back, and they're like, oh shit, my bad. You know, hey, everything's cool, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me, let me, so like, you know, he got paid and, uh, he got a, what it was like a four year deal for $154 million, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a shit ton of money, man. That, Stupid money. I, I, I mean, but you know, Grant, you had mentioned earlier when we were talking on the phone about, you know, certain players, like, for example, Probably you know, Oh yeah, that's right. Enough money to do that. But he's already made his money, man. That's the thing. He's got sponsorships. He has all these other deals. Like, why? Why? And y'all see that? Where he opened that school in Cleveland? I heard something about yeah, that. He opened the school, and apparently he sent. I saw this in a tweet that he sent eleven hundred kids to college fully paid for. What? He's a, yeah, he, dude. He is a huge philanthropist. You can't talk crap about the man. Yeah. Like he hasn't had ever. He hasn't had any sketchy, like uh, incidences over his career. He's clean. Like yeah. regardless of say, like if you drill down on the line, like if you drill on his career, I was watching this PTI. It's like a recap of everything ever happening with LeBron. And they're just like, oh yeah, when he was in 11th grade, they took out the insurance policy. His mom got a G, you know. He has been, you know, like, prophesied as the chosen one and has been the chosen one since he was in 8th grade. That's wild. And like, that's, that's something big to live up to. So, LeBron as a man and a, you know, just like, give him credit for living up to like some crazy expectation yeah yeah because he could it could it could have corrupted him yeah Yeah, no dude i mean he's 
Yeah, he has a spotless career. He's a clutch player. Regardless, like I said, of your opinion, you, I mean, well, yeah, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a realistic fan, there's, there's not negative you can say about him. You can, you can say you don't like his style. You can argue about his choices. But at the end of the day, man, when you're that good and you're getting paid that much and the league recognizes you as the best player, like, you got a little bit of freedom. And he, everyone knew he had that freedom uh, this when he was this year, in this offseason, excuse me. Um, he had the freedom to go anywhere he wanted. Uh, and I think the Lakers, or I, I think everyone would be just as surprised if he went to the 76ers or I think yeah, it's or he went to all the New York. Yeah. yeah, now the only reason it's big with the Lakers is because, of course, um, all the greats, a lot of the greats have taken a stint there uh, at one point in time. And it's a big course agree. of his story. Yeah, yeah but to me, like, what if he would have, like, whipped out his dick and went to Boston, like, boom, I'm going to the Celtics. Like, mm. to me, it would have been just as awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, just as historic of a franchise, the same rivalry. It, to me, that would have been cooler to see. And it would have stayed in the East. Still, yeah, yeah. What's up, LeBron James? Call me. I'd be a great agent for you. I'd help you make decent decisions. But but you um, know you know him and Kyrie. Kyrie but, doesn't want to play with him, so that probably played a part in him trying to move away. Oh, I forgot Kyrie's running from him this whole career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kyrie'd be like, all right, follow me again. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Me, it's hard, dude. It's got it, it, but think about it like this, guys, because this is another topic I wanted to talk about. Because while all the focus is on LeBron going to LA, he's got this big deal and everything. You know, it must be hard playing with him. Uh, it, you know, people that have played with him have mentioned that. And what happens to the guys that are left in Cleveland? You know. Yeah, Jr. I mean, dude, like I feel bad for Jr. because he's a pothead. You know, he can he can do he got roasted in a way that, like, few people do just from one play. Oh, that one play. Yeah, I remember now what you're talking about. I can't, like, I've seen so many memes and whatever gifts about it. <laughs> He's a living meme now. He is. So is he going to stay in Cleveland or will he have, like, career plans to more, you know? I, I don't know, man. I mean, what's left in Cleveland? Yeah. I mean... That jersey sold for like twenty five thousand dollars a pop. So that's off to him. Whew. That's but Man. but but you know what I'm saying? It's just like it, that's why it's so hard for anybody. Like I'm pretty sure you know uh, Dwayne Wade and him were best buddies. That's that's a whole nother relationship. They they really worked well together. Um, but you have Bosch. You got the Kevin Loves, you got the Kyrie Irvins, these other guys that are just yeah. like, hey, you know, you don't understand what it's like to be in the same locker room as the greatest player of all time, supposedly. So, and, and Kevin Loves was like, a, he was a star, in a, you know, like, exactly. He was on his own team. Yeah. It's different because Kevin Loves is the third man. And it, uh, isn't, what's his face? Uh, isn't Isaiah Thomas on the Lakers? Or did he leave? Yeah. But Isaiah Thomas like, played for Cavaliers and the Lakers this season. Yeah. I don't know what team he's on. I think he's still on the Lakers. Dang. I think he's, yeah, I think he's on the Lakers. And he didn't like the, the he didn't like the Cavs, man. He didn't like that, that chemistry there and all that. He was, he was against all that. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, all, all the time, it's always about LeBron. So what if you're, uh, Lonzo Ball, right? I mean, I care. I don't, you know, depending on however you feel about the guy, you know, when LeBron comes and plays on your team, you're playing second, third, fourth fiddle now. Um, listen, I wouldn't worry yeah. about LeBron James. I worry about them signing Rajon Rondo. Like that, oh yeah, they, they play the same position. Oh, true. So if like, Lonzo true. Ball, I would be like, I wouldn't worry, be worried about LeBron James. I'd be like, oh shit, why did why they sign this guy? I thought I was good. So, yeah, this is how it goes, right? Because he comes there. So, if you were the small forward, starting small forward for the Lakers last year, you just lost your job, okay? But not only that, he's going to have this ripple effect where other players are going to get signed over and those guys are going to lose their jobs, you know? So, it's yeah. like, dang, dude. As On one hand, you're like, that would be cool to win a championship and play with one of the greats. I'm sure, like, the guys who played with Michael Jordan and stuff, they have like 50 50 feelings. Like, yeah, that's awesome. But if that's your dream to be an NBA player, you don't just want to be the guy on a team. 
Nobody just wants to be somebody on the team. Like, I was there, you know, I wore a jersey, but I didn't do shit. <laughs> you know, I just kind of rode some yeah. other guy's talent to greatness. And, yeah, I got a ring, but I didn't score the how points, you? you know. So how, 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 how does that you feel? Yeah, true. And like, his dad, he's like Michael Jackson. He's like, dude, my dad's crazy, but <laughs> I still am good at basketball, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, please don't let him ruin anything that you think about me. Give me a chance. Don't yeah. don't let him yeah. ruin your... I could, I, I could not imagine playing in the league with him as my father. Like, the standards are oh, too man. high. The pressure's already there. But to deal with your dad's constant... Just okay, imagine the other no. brothers. Like they had, they lost. They can't go to college and play basketball. That's right. Damn. There's a ninth grader or ten, what, how old is he? Tenth grade. Uh, which one? The youngest. The youngest. I'll look college. it up. Imagine that, dude. You're like, dude, I he scored forty four points in the junior basketball league the other night. Just Damn, that's crazy. But I mean, imagine being like, I better be able to go straight to the NBA. You know what it reminds me of, dude? Yeah, they, I do. They, I, there's, I don't, yeah, I think their dad ruined their career. For this is, one of them, at least. This is how... And the second one yeah. didn't even get a workout. He went, like, two for eight the other day, or three for eight on three-point shots during a private workout. Like, they, they caught it on film. It was on the ESPN. It was ugly. This is like, how, It's not even... It's like you're, you're... You are a celebrity now. Like, it's not even... I can't fly under the radar. It's like, you think about, do y'all watch that show with Snoop Dogg's son playing football? No, uh, I heard about it. Like, the Father's Dream. It, I mean, it's, it's like, Snoop Dogg is Snoop Dogg, you know. Yeah. But his son is actually pretty good. But that's like, your son, you are under a microscope no matter what from the age where you can't even handle it. Like, imagine any of us in 11th grade and someone's like, putting us, like, on ESPN and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean... Who can live up to that? You and know? Not many people, man. Uh, you know, like, uh, talking about this and that family, it makes me think about... Just imagine that, like, stereotypical, cocky proud father trying to live through his son like maybe he's like the star high school quarterback and he's like that's my boy he's gonna score touchdowns here coach you better put him in now you know and it's just like he's just like i'm just trying to play football you know please don't listen to that guy in the stands like you know because you know imagine if your parents showed up at your work and were just always like talking to your boss and go why aren't you giving my son more hours yeah just kind of you just like, look, I'm an adult now, you know? Yeah, maybe young, but, you know, stop feeding off of my success. Let me create my own path because, you know, you're you're going to ruin it for all of us if you if you do. But you were asking Jared about the other brothers, right? There's Leangelo, okay? He's like the I think the one right under Lonzo and then the youngest is LaMelo Ball. Um Oh yeah. And then there's other ones I think, but yeah, those are those are the two that are playing overseas. What, where are they playing at again? No, 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 no. No? You're, you're not up to date. I'm not you're up to date? Not I'm not – what? Whoa. Left Lithuania League. That's over? Back in California. What? The middle brother just had a private workout with only one team, and he murdered the workout. And so I don't think he's going to get a job. And then the youngest son is in the uh, JBA, which is the Junior Basketball Association, I think. Yeah. I'm not mistaken, and he's playing in that league right now. But like I said, the middle one is Lonzo Ball came out. Not Lonzo Ball, the, the father, the, the the one who won't shut the hell up. That one. <laughs> he. Lavar. Like, he, yeah, Lavar had like he had like three workout offers or three invitations, and he would only let him work out for the Lakers, and they did not take him. You know what he reminds me of, dude? That father reminds me of like a a, a WWE wrestler or some type, you know? He always. Yeah. Son this Saturday night at the Lakers, though. 
I spoke it into a, uh, into a, uh, existence. You know, he's going to get drafted by the Lakers. Everybody's going to get drafted by the Lakers. It's just like, whoa, bro. But then the shit happens, and then we have egg on our face like this guy, bro. I mean, he, <laughs> let me just start walking around going, I'm going to get signed by the Lakers, man, and it's going to happen, you know? Yeah. I mean, but it's crazy, dude. They're like the male version of the Kardashians, in my opinion, dude. Just like the – they're just like the drama. They're famous. They might be talented, but they're not. They're getting more attention and credit than they deserve. I think you know. Time will tell with Lonzo. You know, like you said, man. Uh, I'm glad that you pointed that out. That he has been humble and trying to keep shit quiet. So he does. You know, because if he's Listen, dude, at the end of the day, it's a marketing technique. The louder you are, is the more tweets, the more likes, the yeah, more everything. It's more true. cash in your pocket. It's more promoting. It's all that. Like. At the end of the day, acting like a pass these days is a good way to get ahead, and he plays it better than anybody else. Just now, being honest, he knows what he's doing. Now, let me let me ask you guys' uh, opinion on this. So, if you're Lonzo Ball, right, you're you're thinking you're going to be this young star for LA, but now LeBron comes and. Most of these young players, and, and even us, because LeBron is our MJ, I think. And, you know, he comes on the team. Does that take away from you? Or are you, are you just going to start going, well, I'm going to take the sidestep to this, and I'll just try to learn from one of the greats and try to help out. But, you know, where, where do you, how do you think he feels about it? Because, I mean, that's kind of how Kyrie was in Cleveland. He was the first pick. You know, he was he was going to be the one that turned the whole franchise around and because LeBron had left. And then and now LeBron's like, hey, I'm here. And that changes everything, man. It changes the culture. Uh, it changes the team chemistry and how the coaches act because, I mean, you guys could probably attest to LeBron is the coach as well as the player. You know, it's really hard to coach LeBron James, you know. And and yeah, not not only just yeah, LeBron's coach now was drafted like thirty something picks behind him. Like they're the same age. Who is the Lakers coach? Oh, what is his name? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what, I don't. Uh, Luke it Walton. Doesn't matter anymore. I it, just can't think of his name. They were drafted the same year. Yeah. It's it's Luke yeah, Walton. I saw that on Facebook today. I've never heard of this guy in my life, man. But, yeah, he's the coach, I guess. That's weird. So, like you said, dude, LeBron is the coach, pretty much. Yeah. Well, he, is. he calls the shots. I mean, you can watch, like, this, uh, the sideline cam during the finals, and you could tell who was calling the place. Like, uh, there, was, there, was, there was no confusion on, on who was calling the shots. And, yeah, man, if I was the Lakers, they're – they have a lot of young players who look at are more looking forward to establishing their careers. They don't want to be no names. So overall, like the attitude, like at the end of the day, they don't have a choice. Yeah. And who gives? Like who cares? The Lakers are going to pay you ten, fifteen million dollars to be LeBron's sidekick. Who cares? Like, yeah. All right. Fair enough. But yeah, it's not the. Not the brightest light to be under, you know what I'm saying? Hey, and, uh, let me ask you guys this then. Okay, what do you think? And y'all, y'all take turns on this, man. What do you think, Michael? Uh, not Michael. Oh my God, Magic. What do you think he said to LeBron to convince him to come to LA? Besides the money, the deal. Put that to the side. If if we were a fly on that wall, man, how do you think that conversation went down?
And uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you think, Jared? Yeah, my bad, Jared. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. I feel like you are walking in some big shoes. But who is when did the season of LeBron? You know, who who can top that? Where like if you were to take all the greatest Lakers, Kobe, Kareem, Shaq, you know, go down the list. LeBron has just like overshadowed all of them. You know, he's right. He's rewriting history. And like that's probably what he said is like, dude, if you come here and well, it's not like LeBron does not know the history of the NBA. True. You know, like, but I yeah, it's it's got to be the same kind of thing where okay, you will be basically the face of the West. You know, Steph Curry's awesome. Kevin Durant's awesome. All those dudes, but you just like pulled in everything. I saw this meme where it was like. Uh, Bandwagon jumpers died to the Lakers. And one of them was, hey, if you're in the Staples Center and people aren't wearing, uh, like, <laughs> gold and purple, you're at the wrong game, you know? Mm-hmm. Where he has taken over that city. Same way he did in Miami, you know? It's awesome, but it's like, it just blows my mind still. I still haven't talked to it, to be honest with you. You know, you know what I heard, guys, is that out of all the years, that was the first time ever that LeBron and Magic had a face-to-face conversation. Like, they had never really met, dude. I know, and that was crazy to me. I was like, what? So maybe that has some impact, yeah. man. You, you know, you have this great show up in your house, and he's like, bro. No, there's no way. There's no, no, way no dude, I'm telling you. Look it up, brother. That is, it's a fact, oh. man. <laughs> is it so unbelievable? Yeah, uh, it's a little disturbing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's a little weird, right? Let me see if I can. Um, but yeah, um, other than that, man, you know, there was the rumor of Paul George going over there, and yeah, I saw that too. And I he, thought that was like gonna happen. Yeah, me too. I I kind of felt like he was like, okay, the whole OKC thing didn't really work out. I mean, I I could do it, but. You know, I guess he has some kind of ties to L.A. or California. I'm not sure if he's from there, but there was rumors that that's why he would want to go that way. And then it was like the night before, right, that him and Russell Westbrook are in a club or something or at something, and they just announce him like, yo, I'm sending OKC, you know, and just light him up, guys, if you got him, you know, and – and then you have Houston, you know, like we, there's the Warriors and they take up a lot of our attention because they are super stacked. Not only because they have, um, you know, KD and Steph, but you know, those are players that were drafted. Most of those players were just there and they developed into the, the stars that they are. So, but you still have James Harden and, and Chris Paul and, you know, you got all these other teams. And, and so it's it's just interesting to me that you just go to the conference to to try to go through the team that you can't even beat when you were, you know, in, in the finals. And now you have to go through them to get to the finals. And by that point, you're going to have a team like the Boston Celtics who hopefully are healthy this year. So they have Gordon Hayward, they have Kyrie Irving, and everybody else who stepped up. And they're going to breeze through the Eastern Conference. And when they get to the finals, they're going to be just stretching, pulling their legs, going, oh, what's up, LeBron? You tired, bro? <laughs> you know, just, ah, dude, you don't, even, you don't even know, man. We had to go to game seven, and we barely got through. And now we got it. Oh, well, you know, we're ready to play. We got done. You know, we swept those guys. We're good, you know. So I just feel like it's not as much as uh, of him going there to win, but just to kind of ride it out. And, hey, we'll see what we can work out for you because – you know, look at what Kobe did over the last couple of years of his career. I mean, I don't know where he yeah. went. He didn't. They didn't get no finals or anything, and he was carrying that team I on his back. Make the playoffs his last season, yeah. Ugh. But I mean, he was still balling out. I guess it's just to boost your stats. It's like, hey man, you're going to be running stuff. You know, yeah. you make a statue, dude. Just yeah. It's it's weird, man. And I don't know how you feel if you're like someone like Shaq or Kobe either, who you're like so associated with. 
uh, the Lakers franchise. You have statues and all these things. And now you got someone like LeBron James showing up. And now he's going to get a piece of that cake. And you guys, those guys are going to get slid down a little bit. Now, I wouldn't say Kobe as much, but because Kobe stayed there his whole career, right? He never yeah. went nowhere else. But Shaq, Shaq was all over the place. Shaq played on a bunch of teams, yeah. Especially late. He went to, like, he went to the Heat, he went to the Suns, he went to the Cavs. Like, he jumped around for sure. He went to the Celtics. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, mean, I think he started his career in Charlotte. Yo. Yeah, he played on a lot of teams. Played for the Heat. He won a championship with the Heat. Did he play LeBron yeah, he, for a year? Him and Wade, yeah. Was it him and Wade or him and LeBron? Him and Wade, yeah. That was like 2005, I think. But then you went to the Cavs and you played with LeBron for a minute. You're right. Yo, I'm going to read this art, a piece of this article real quick. It's from the BaltimoreSun.com, but it's like stating that on Saturday morning, James flew into L.A., and where he and his family vacationed last week. And now I, I talked to Shane when this happened, and he mentioned something about LeBron owning some kind of business or some business ties in L.A., so he also has money over there and stuff. But um, he spent the day at home minutes before Johnson arrived at his house, before Magic got there. Paul George was saying, uh, yeah, I'm a... Um, I'm gonna just stay in OKC for another, you know, four de- a four year deal and 137 million dollars, without even meeting with the Lakers. And he does, Paul George does have ties to Southern California. I guess that's where his roots are. And so that's yeah, that's a little wild. I think that triggered everything to happen the way it did, because they were probably trying, they were gonna reach out to him, and it, especially if LeBron wasn't gonna go there, they're like, yo, we still gotta have a plan B, C, D, and E, you know. But damn, just kind of felt like a little rushed. And it says that on Saturday night, James' agent, Rich Paul, had a conversation with the Cavaliers. He reportedly met with the 76ers. Now, that would have been a bad, that would have been a bad idea, I think, dude. Yeah, that would have been weird. I mean, because, I mean, stay in the East, but I don't think, you know, by going from Cleveland to the 76ers, you're making a lateral move. You know what I'm saying? It's just another project that you have to take all that. It's just been, like, the same kind of team, yeah. He's just the player. I think he's just the finals, but good luck beating the Warriors, you know. And I guess just being a Laker, right? There's something about being a Laker that, you know... It adds something to your resume. It adds something to your your legacy, you know, because that's one of the more popular teams in the Money, NBA. Merch, yeah, all that comes into it as well. Lakers have a huge fan base. Mm-hmm. It says he knew what the Lakers once meant to the NBA. Um, he believed enough in this team's future, its leadership, and his own recruiting abilities to sign a four-year deal. So, yeah, I'm sure he was like, I'm going to get this knocked out so I can get there and I can start calling up my friends and going, hey, I'm in L.A. now. It's pretty nice out here. <laughs> Y'all want to come out? You know, you can be my next-door neighbor. You know, it's nice in the summer. We'll be here all year, you know. I mean, I, I it, I, I, I wouldn't turn down the opportunity to live in California. I don't think I've never been, but I mean, given, I don't know, Cleveland doesn't seem like the best place to live, you know, as far as like appealing. I'm not saying like the people or anything. I'm not saying it's trash or anything, but you know, if you're telling me, oh, uh, you want to spend four years in Cleveland, Ohio, or in, in Los Angeles, California, uh, I mean, that's, that's not even a, you know, a debate, bro. Oh, man. Did you look up that thing, Grant, about Magic never meeting LeBron? Or did you... Uh... I mean, it's, it doesn't specify if it was the first time they met. But apparently Magic Johnson went to his house uh, Saturday night before the free agency opened up. I think that's the biggest thing, too, man, is that he's like, yo, I'm here, I'm at your door, let's sit down and talk. It'd be one thing if he tried to just hit him up on the phone, shoot him a text, <laughs> you know, like... Hey man, this is Magic. I hope you saved my number. You know, it's like new phone. Who this? <laughs> it's like, dang man, I, it's it's crazy, man. And I don't know if it's a good thing. Do you guys think it's a good thing for the NBA, or do you think it's a bad thing? Because I'm gonna tell you before you guys answer that that I didn't really watch the finals this year, especially after the Celtics got out of the playoffs. I was kind of like, whatever. 
And I just felt like we're going to get the same thing. It's going to be the Warriors are pack and loaded. And now you got the West is starting to build up even more because just because LeBron goes there, like I was just mentioned, he's going to recruit. So he might drag some dudes from the East <laughs> and go, Hey, come out here to the West. It's nice. And, and we can win some, you know, get out of wherever you're at and come over here. So now the East gets even weaker. Because I don't really think teams, players are going to move around in the West. Maybe, but I feel like, if anything, they're going to go from the East to the West. So, I mean, is it a good thing that this happened? I mean, I know it's shocking and it's still surprising to us that he picked L.A., but is it a good thing for the NBA as a whole that the best player goes to the Lakers after, you know, you had someone like Kobe Bryant who's considered one of the best players? You know, you have that history. So... I yeah. mean, so how do you... I think it'll be good either way. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be good basketball. I mean, it, you know, LeBron's going to have to fight like hell to get in the finals. So that's going to be good basketball. And then the East is going to have a solid team as well. It's going to be a new dynamic to see. You're going to have the Lakers Boston rivalry. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And um, you're, I think you're going to see different teams in the finals, which I think is a goal. Uh, they want to make it like less predictable, you know, uh, of who's going to arrive there. So by putting all the powerhouses on one side, kind of keeps it rotating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. What about you, Jared? I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, kind of like Grant said, it's not the best thing because it's power heavy towards the West. But hey, here's a good time to plug our sponsor. Uncle Drew, Star Kyrie, <laughs> Shaq, <laughs> <Not> Shaq. <laughs> but but <laughs> in theaters now. Go check it out. It's the number but one comedy in America right now. Wave for a ten percent discount. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but dude, I, like as a fan, I'm just like it's a, it's a, going back to Russell Westbrook, bro. It, name a more loyal player through all this. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good point. I mean, he is, he's a ride or die. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, he is. He is. But wherever he goes, he's going to take 60 or 70 shots a game. Ooh. Yeah, true. Exactly. OKC okay, has let him do that. And the reason why KD left to give rings is because he was taking 60 to 70 shots. Just yeah, so. and they lost, you know. I mean, to just imagine them... If you were to like make a all star team and you were like, Oh yeah, they had Durant, oh snap, they had like uh freaking what's his name? My mind is like it from the rocket. Uh James. James Harden. Dude, Chris Paul? Harden, dude, that oh. is so crazy. Oh yeah. But you're right, they're all three number one players. And they gotta be the number one on the team. So they're not gonna like it's almost good that they're not together because they're clashing the Titans. Yeah. But it's almost like I want to see LeBron thrive. That's, it kind of boils down to that. Like, I love LeBron, and my friend Micah tweeted it. Shout out, Micah Long. <laughs> it, it, it was hard to be a Lakers fan when they got, uh, dang it, I'm looking again. What's his name? Steve, uh, with the Lakers? Point guard, point guard. Uh, for, oh, Steve Nash? Dude, he was like, it made it hard to be a Lakers fan when they got Nash. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, I mean, like, I don't know how I feel about it all together, man. I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm like you. What's up? What's up? He was just a complete curveball. Throw it. If you want to talk about, like, Lakers best move what they could have done no they couldn't have done this I don't know no. I don't know this guy's right but if the Lakers would have dumped all their money on two players who like other than LeBron James he was the perfect person if they could have gotten to LA we would have like fixed everything and dominated the league dang that's a good question who? it's Russell Westbrook ooh if they were, if, if somehow, if somehow, oh, dude, that's exactly what I was thinking. If they somehow were able to pull Paul Jordan Westbrook and put them into LA, 
That would be so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Nobody could beat them in the league. Like, I love the Warriors, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I love that team. Tony, like, yeah. Oh, you have a one-season, dude. You're so right. Dude, Westbrook and James play at the same speed and the same intensity. Like, you cannot handle that duo for for four quarters. It wouldn't happen. Yo, let me let me ask y'all this. So, would you rather play with Russell Westbrook or LeBron James? LeBron, I mean, yeah, probably LeBron just because you're like, I'm just if I couldn't surf out a championship, I'll do it. You know what I mean? And play with the greatest, you know. But bro, Westbrook, I mean, he goes so hard for his team. Like, yeah, true. He has to take. So I mean, is there a way around that? Is there? A, uh, is hold there? On, hold on. Did he have to take sixty shots when KD was on the team? I think they took uh, turns, was it, right? Was it really necessary back then, too, or? Um, probably not. But he would drive into the lane unnecessarily. That's the thing. Is like, yeah. I remember watching it, and it's like he was just like getting slammed in the lane for not really any reason. He could have just kicked it out to KD, you know. But it's like, you know, that's the thing I'm saying about when you, you're a professional basketball player, you're a professional athlete, right? Yes, you have a role and a lane to stay in, but if that's your dream to become, uh, you, you know, a basketball player, uh, you're not just trying to be a guy on the team. You, these guys all grew up looking up to the greats and that's what you're striving yeah. for. So I guess when it comes down to it, you got the personalities like Russell um, and James and, and even Kyrie who are like, yo, I want to be the star player. I want to be the one when it comes down to it, I'm the one that takes the last shot. I'm the one that's like, you know, instead of, you know, but it's a team thing though. But it's almost like you don't want anybody who's like close to your level where it's going to, you know, throw things off balance. You want to have good pieces around you and so you can have that help but you want to always be the center of attention because you want to be the face of the franchise at the end of the day you know and i don't know man it's it's very interesting though i i I just think it's all kind of out there and you know free agency pretty much just started so we we don't know what's going to come from from everything later down the road Yeah. It's, it's not about it's not about getting the five best players on the court. It's about getting the best two, Ooh. Or the best three. Ooh, quote them. And you just compensate with your bench for all your other needs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good coaching. It's, um, yeah. You know, it's it's different. Like, it's just different dynamic. And yeah. It's, you know, but that that happens with big contracts and with sports when you know. Yeah. It's a billion dollar industry, and that. Yeah, there you go. Well, um, I got like two more questions for you guys. Do you guys have anything else you want to throw out there before I ask those things? Not really. I mean, yeah, I think. I yeah. I want to see him dominate and be the best. You know, because yeah. I wasn't old enough to watch Michael. True. Dominate. It's like I want to like be able to witness the greatness. Yeah, I think I I agree with you with that, man. How about you, Grant? Yeah. He's entertaining. He is. Okay, so here's here's the two final questions before we wrap up wrap up the episode, okay? Um LeBron's in LA. As of today, based off of what we know and how the teams are today, like we just said, this could change tomorrow, you know? We don't know. The season starts like in the fall, right? Like November. Like yeah, so I mean, we're in July, so there's plenty of time for things to switch up. But as we talk today, with this four-year deal for LeBron in L.A., how many championships does he win, and how many times does he go to the finals? And Jared, oh, Jared, you go ahead and take the start, and then. All right, I'm making my prediction. Y'all tune in in four years from now. <laughs> I want to say, I think he'll make the finals. Not this coming year. I think he'll make it at least two in a row, and I think he'll win one. 
Out of four. So one more. That's just, yeah. With the L.A. Okay, okay. So he's In not LA, this. He'll miss the finals this year. Mm-hmm. The Warriors are just going to like, they're too, they're already too next. They're too OP. He's going to go through the Warriors, the Spurs, and the freaking Rocket. Mm-hmm. To mm. be there. So that's just my prediction, you know. Two of, you know, he'll be in two and win one. Mm. What about you, Grant? All right. Well, Grant. <laughs> no comment. We lost, we lost Grant. <laughs> Did we? I don't even know, man. Grant, you there? Oh, I'm here. So what? sorry. I was on mute. I was on mute. Like one time, one championship in four years, or one time's going to the finals? Okay, no, yeah, I'm going to go, yeah, two times to the finals, one championship. Ooh, okay, okay. What do I think, guys? Um, I think that the only way he goes to the finals again as an L.A. Laker is if, like, the, the, the universe works for him, right? I'm saying, like, that the Warriors have a, a health bug. I'm talking about players get injured. I'm saying that it won't be if everybody's healthy on their A game. I don't think it doesn't really matter who they bring over there. I think every year he's going to get older. I think he's going to get more tired, especially as the season progresses. I I, I don't see him making it. I think he'll, they'll go deep in the playoffs. Um, he'd be lucky to get to the finals one time as a LA Laker, depending on in the future who they have around him, you know? Um, but I think he'll just like, I, I think he'll make some achievements and break some more records and stuff. But as far as championships, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, and I, I think that's something he knew going into this decision. Like, Hey, like, like Grant mentioned earlier, uh, you know, like what can you give this guy? He's already got championship rings. He's already got money. So now he's just playing basketball. If it all works out, it works out. But I, I don't really think that it's going to happen. Now, that's only if, um, you know, nothing really changes. But let's say that, you know, like the Warriors, they break apart. They, they disband. You know, the West kind of like shifts and it balances itself out. I, I, I can see him like giving one good final try next year after – they give this whole test run and adjust like you guys both said. Um, but um, so the last thing I'm going to ask you guys before we wrap it up is with with LeBron being in L.A. And I think you guys kind of already answered it. But who's in the finals this year? And who wins? What Based off of the teams that we got, the rosters that we got right now. Gotcha. What about you, Jay? Honestly, but I'm gonna say, okay, 
let me counter let me counter back a question to y'all too. Okay. Where do you think Kawhi Leonard is gonna go? Ooh. I don't think he's staying in. Dominate. Mm. If he goes to the East, I mean, that's almost like LeBron. Do you think the Lakers are still in conversation for him? If he goes to the Lakers, then I might change my answer on, you know, they may win two championships. If they can come together, like, him and Bob. That's a different conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be the big three again. Damn. That's a good point. And he's such a good defensive player as well. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that That's would tough. that would change everything if you know because we we I think we all agree that he's not staying in San Antonio, and I think no, he's no, no, he's no, made no, that no, public, no, right? Don't want to be there. Yeah. So with that being said, he's either gonna go uh, pledge his allegiance to some team in the West, whether it's the Rockets, whether it's you know L.A., or he'll pick a team out of the East. Which, if you're trying to win, there's only a, less than a handful of teams that you go to that team, you increase the chances of, you know, making it to the finals. So you're, you know, you're, you're not dealing with much. So whether it depends on him and how much he wants as far as money and contract and all that, all those technical things. But I think, yeah, like you said, Jared, if he goes to LA, I mean, that's a, that's a nice batch, man. You know, that's a nice, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's what they're going to need, especially to face the warriors who have, you know, DeMarcus Cousins now and KD and all the other pieces, you know, that, that that would be the piece that would probably level it out a little bit more. I still think that Grant said the Warriors have an edge over everybody right now still. They just have that all-star weekend group well, on the floor. The thing about the Warriors, uh, no matter how many superstars are on that team, none of them are egotistical. They still pass yeah, the ball yeah, around. Good. If one of them... If somebody's getting shut down, somebody picks up the slack. Unless you have five players on five players, you cannot beat the Warriors. And there's a lot of teams that cannot compete that way. They can go four on four. They can go three on three on five. But, like, the Warriors, one of those teams, you have to shut down everybody. Clay Thompson has had 40-point games. Draymond Green's uh, had games in, in the 30s. So, you know, Steph and KD have both had 40-point games. Mm-hmm. Um, like, their whole bench is capable. And they have Iguodala on, the, you know, uh, sorry, on the bench as well. And um, they have, they have too much Green. talent. And, uh, yeah. Draymond Green, yeah. Uh, all their players. And uh, Coach yeah, Kerr knows how to put them in the position that they know how to cooperate. That, that's a culture thing that's going on there right now. That's what, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, they have the cap space, they have the players, but there is, you know, you see it in runs with the Celtics, it's a culture thing. Like, in Golden State has that right now. They have a good staff. They have so much going for them, more than just talent. The reason all that talent's there is because of good management and good coaching to begin with. And Steph Curry wouldn't have the shot he has been one for Steve Kerr. Mm. Like, like Steve Kerr has developed Steph Curry. Like, no, and like not just in Steph Curry. I'm, I'm a huge fan of him. He's he's earned everything he has. But credit to be due, you know, where it belongs. Like, you know, it's. Uh, Definitely, they're they're doing so many things right, and that's why they're as good as they are. It's not about just having one bombshell player like LA's trying to pull. Like they're yeah. top to bottom, they they're, they're at a different angle, you know. Yeah, damn. So good points, man. I think everybody had good thoughts on this whole topic, and and I know like I, like we addressed at the beginning, we're we're mostly into football and stuff, but you know, I know that we all. I haven't as much lately, but we all pay attention to all the sports and anything going on in the sports world. So it's just fun and interesting to all of us. So, um, but yo, Jared, did you have a finals prediction before we wrap it up? Man, I can't. It's hard to say someone else was between the Celtics and the Warriors. I mean, yeah, you just you saw the Celtics going so hard on Cleveland. A young team, you know. And they didn't even have their like, two best players, man. Exactly. And it's like they they didn't back down to Cleveland. You know, it's like you have a vet, you have LeBron the whole you know the the whole that it like you can't even really describe it. It's like dang man, like they're not shying away from 
Ocean of LeBron, Fallon LeBron, and he's gone. I don't, you know? I don't think people are intimidated by him anymore, man, especially as he gets older. I think that people who have watched him and played against him and played with him are noticing that there is some kind of decline and that, yes, yeah. us, the viewers and fans, make him out to be this larger-than-life Never ending energizer bunny type player, but Father Time is going to catch up with him, man, especially with how much weight he's carried throughout all the years on all these teams. So I don't think teams are, I think they take it upon themselves like we can do this. Every year we have a slightly higher chance to do it. So, oh man, Grant, we lost Grant on the call, dude. Hold on. Let me get him. Skirt. Yo, Grant, are you there? I dropped the call. Oh, you're good, man. Yeah, I just noticed, man. You didn't miss much. <laughs> but, um, Thanks for letting me back in, guys. Really appreciate that. All yeah, right. yeah, no problem, yeah, dude. Welcome back, dude. I predicted freaking the Heat versus the Bucks, Milwaukee <laughs> versus Miami. No, I'm just kidding. Yo. I, I mean, I'm with you. I think it'll be the Celtics and the Warriors, and uh, depending on the health uh, of each team, you know, I think it'll go toe to toe, honestly. Um, because I think those young players like Jason uh, uh, Tatum are, are and all those other members of the Celtics, they're going to show up and they're getting better every year. So uh, if you have Kyrie and Gordon Hayward, wh- where we lost Gordon Hayward in the first game of the season for the whole season, that, that was devastating. I think like if stuff like that doesn't happen, you know, that's the kind of finals we'll have. And I kind of want to see a resurgence of a Lakers Celtics rivalry. I think that would be fun. Especially with the Kyrie versus LeBron, you know, I think that's a that's an awesome. Yeah, that would be dope, man. It'd be fun to watch, and I mean, that would definitely grab my interest. But um, but yeah, guys, I mean, uh, I think that really covers everything on the whole LeBron LA the what what are they calling it now? Is it La, the the LeBron or something? They're trying to do a little play on the word. Yeah, the, <laughs> yo. It's crazy, man. But, um, yeah, man, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your night to uh, record, man. This, this is fun. Yeah, man. I mean, I know uh, I was talking to Grant. We're, we're going to do some more sports stuff, especially once um, football season picks up. Um, but I definitely want to have both of you guys on about so many other different topics and stuff. So, you know, like I said, thank you. I hope you guys had a good time. I mean, I know – I enjoy listening to you guys' input. Oh, God. <laughs> it's fun, Jerry. Happy to talk to you again, man. Hell yeah. You too, dude. All right, man. Well, that's going to be it for us on this episode. This is episode seven. Um, and, yeah. So, we'll catch you all later. Not one championship. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. Not seven. Oh. Hey, and when I say that, and when I say that, I really believe it. LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James.